On the 20th of September, our church celebrates the feast of Saint Eustathios. The following is some thoughts on his life and works. Saint Eustathios was called Placidas and his wife Tatiana before they and their sons became Christians. Placidas was a general who lived at Rome in the time of Trajan, from 98 to 117 AD. Even though he was a pagan, he was remarkably virtuous and had an especial love for the poor. Seeing his well-disposed nature, God revealed himself somewhat as he had done to St. Paul. When Placidus was hunting in the forest one day and had a great stag at bay, he beheld between its antlers a cross, brighter than the sun, on which he could see Christ. He also heard a voice saying, Placidus, why are you pursuing me? I am Christ, whom you unwittingly honoured by your good works. I came to earth in human form to save humankind, and appear to you today so as to catch you in the nets of my love for man." Astonished and terror-struck, Placidus fell from his horse and was without consciousness for several hours. The truth of the vision was beyond doubt when Christ appeared a second time and gave him to know that he is by nature God, the maker of heaven and earth, who out of love for mankind has taken our nature upon himself. Placidus then believed from the depths of his heart and was baptized with his wife and their sons. They all took the new names, Ephstathios and Theopista, became the Christian names of the parents, and Agapios and Theopistos, those of their sons. Seeing him in the righteousness which is of the faith, the Lord again appeared to Eustathios and told him of tribulations like Job's that the devil would bring upon him, but that divine grace would remain with him. Soon afterwards he lost all he possessed and decided to take ship for Egypt with his wife and children. The master of the vessel was a licentious rogue and seized his wife in the moment that he and his sons disembarked. Eustathios tearfully went on his way, and as he was crossing a river, a wolf and a lion made off with his sons, leaving him a ruined and lonely man, whose faith and only hope were in the mercy of the Lord. So this once brilliant member of the Roman nobility now went from one place to another with the patience of Job, living by casual work. He settled at last as an orchard watchman in a place called Badassos, not far from where his two sons, who had been rescued by shepherds, were growing up unbeknown to him. Fifteen years later, the barbarians among whom Theopista was living in captivity were preparing to invade the empire in large numbers, but the Romans were unable to find a general skillful enough to withstand them. Then the emperor recalled the courage and many victories of Eustathios and sent in search of him. When he appeared at the court, Eustathios was scarcely recognisable. Poverty and affliction had so altered his countenance. The emperor restored him to his rank and possessions and gave him command of the legions which, with God's help, drove back the barbarians. During the campaign, if Stathios was reunited with his wife and children, that his patience might not be without reward in this life. On his triumphal return to Rome, Hadrian, the new emperor, loaded him with gifts and asked him to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the idols for his victory. If Stathios replied that to Christ alone was the victory due, and not to the fancied power of false gods. This reply aroused the anger of the tyrant. Once again, all his goods were confiscated, and St. Eustathios, his wife and children, were given to be food for the lions. As the beasts couched reverently before them, not daring to touch them, the holy martyrs were thrown into a red-hot bronze cauldron, shaped like a bull, where they gave up their souls to God without their bodies undergoing any change. This astonished the pagans and brought great joy to the faithful, who recognized by this sign that the grace of God dwelt in the bodies of the holy martyrs and remained with them for consolation in their sufferings.